This podcast has some really bad language, stuff you wouldn't want your parents or even your little kids to hear. But you know what? We don't give a Thank you for joining us again. This is Paul Wilson. And I'm Danny Voss. And I'm Andrew Murdoch from Suncoast Converters. And we're so excited to be here today to talk to you more about building your transmission. Today's episode is going to focus all around the Duramax builds, something I'm really excited for, something Danny's really excited oh, yeah. for. Danny, you drive an LBZ with Suncoast parts in it. Absolutely. And I've driven about a million of them. I yeah. love it. They're You sell a lot of Suncoast clutch packs. <laughs> It, it it definitely happens, right? So, so Andrew, tell me, what are some of the most important things as I'm deciding about my build? Where should we start when we're talking about building a Duramax transmission? Where we should really start is the application of what the end user is using it for. Um, once we when, once we get that, and then the baseline of what they're doing to the truck as far as modifications and fuel and in air, um, then we can really get the baseline of, you know, what we need as far as hard parts to, to go along with it. If I throw a build out there for you, an example build, do you think you could recommend where we would start on specking out my transmission build? Yeah, I definitely think I could. We'll use Danny's truck. I got an 06 LBZ regular cab. Mm-hmm. I daily drive it. I drag race hard with it. I mean, I hot lap this bitch. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm younger, so I drive like an asshole. And i truck pull and and i truck pull um but i don't drive like an asshole just for the record (laughs) Mm, at any rate i uh i am looking at building the truck in the future right now it's running on stock fuel so i have a lift pump stock injector stock cp3 down the road i want to twin it so i want to do like an s480 or an s475 compounds with some 60 injectors and a 10 mil okay what do you where do i start well, um, where we start from there is, you know, first and foremost, a good, a good torque converter. Um, with what you're talking about as far as turbo selection right now and where we want to go in the future, I believe it would be beneficial if we got a converter in there that had a billet stator, um, something that's going to be able to take a little more abuse than an entry-level converter 1056 but something that's going to be able to uh, be multiversed and possibly, you know, restalled uh, somewhere on down the road without having a pricey, uh, you know, tag along with it. So in my opinion, I'd probably choose something like the 1054. Um, It's a great converter. Um, It's very heavy duty. It's got the forged billet cover, has the billet stator, um, it's got the uh, aftermarket lockup clutch in it and the custom piston. Um, but more so along what else it has is the you know heat-treated turbine splines. It's got the TIG welding and the uh, furnace brazing, which gives it that just that extra rigidity when it's just getting abused. Um, from there, um, I'm saying, you know, if we're going to be in a racing application, then safety is really paramount. Uh, we want to have an SFI-approved flex plate on there because the last thing that we want is someone to get injured doing something that they love. Um, you know, from there, I would move into the transmission, and uh, I would say if we're not going built motor, then we can probably stay away from uh, billet shafts, but it's never, you know, a bad idea to have an input shaft and an output shaft in there. Um, but, you know, as, as far as necessity, their necessities, we're going to pressure, you know, we have the shift kit, the lockup valve, and then we have the aftermarket clutches and pressure plates and pistons and all that kind of stuff. And that's a good, you know, 650 horsepower, 700 horsepower trans right there. Oh, wow. Okay. So so you're thinking I'm going to need pretty much th- the full build. I'm going to need a, a billet stator in my converter. You had recommended a 1054. Is that a triple disc? Yeah, everything that we have is triple disc. Pardon the interruption. This is Nick with Calibrated Power Solutions. If you can appreciate the kind of advice that Paul and Danny are giving uh, our listeners on this episode and would appreciate that kind of personalized advice, I would encourage you to check out calibratedpower.com and duramaxtuner.com where you can get a hold of our guys and get that kind of personal attention five days a week, eight hours a day. 815-568-7920. Back to the podcast. So I got a 1054 converter. 
um, upgraded clutch packs, upgraded valve body, and upgraded flex plate. Yeah, and the reason why I'm throwing the shafts out there, obviously, is because, you know, we did mention competition. Now, it depends on what our goal in the competition is. I mean, if it's to finish, you know, to finish a competition, <laughs> to finish a drag race, the last thing that we want to deal with is the possible, the possibility of catastrophic failure. Now, um, do we necessarily need shafts at, you know, 600, 650 horse? Probably no. not, but it's important um, to have them. Are we relying on them to get down the track or to pull this, you know, sled to the end of the, the end of that track? Things happen, you know. You guys know that um, it, it's been in race, ingrained in racing from the very beginning. Um, I think it's just one of those things where it's better safe than sorry, and it really just relies on the end user's budget and you know wh- how serious they want to get into it. But options are good. Yeah, and I just really wanted to ask you this as well. You're talking about, um, you know, uh, stalls. As far as stalls. How do you pick the right stall for your truck and for your converter? Well, it's dependent upon, obviously, what's done in the truck and then, you know, what the customer is doing with it. You know, a 3,000 stall um, racing converter isn't going to be the best for the guy that's towing his, you know, 30-foot camper with his wife on vacation through Yellowstone. Can you you explain a little bit why is that? Can you explain how stall works and how stall affects drivability? Yeah, so stall speed is the amount of RPM that the engine can reach with the brakes, you know, uh, locked, I guess you could say, and the transmission and gear before the point of which, you know, the uh, wheels start to turn. Um, and the stall speed is assigned in a, in a pretty easy way um, and it, to rate basically the converter's performance level, I guess you could say. So you could have a converter that is, you know, 1700 stall. You could have a converter that's, you know, 2100 stall. And then we could, you could get to one that's, you know, 27 to 3000, depending on the vehicle setup. And there's a lot of things that play into effect of that, obviously. Um, you know, there's things that can mask um, situations and make them feel like there's an issue with a converter, you know, such as boost leaks and, and, and that's stuff that we can get into in another time. But um, compared to a stock type converter, um, we're really light years ahead of the game. Um, we can really just kind of take care of any application just because of being able to make stators, being able to um, make the custom piston setups and get the clearances that we need inside to make them efficient. And you know, it's kind of, Six, I don't. Uh, it's a unique situation. I, I believe the torque converter is probably the most misunderstood portion of a truck in general. Oh, for sure. For <laughs> I think sure. a lot of people just think, oh, you know, I'm going to get this converter and a whole bunch of witchcraft goes on inside <laughs> it, and uh, you know, it allows me to go down the road. Yeah. And there's a lot of working, you know, pieces to that puzzle. That's and why we wanted to talk to you. Dictate stall. And you know how it reacts, and you know everything. So, no, I hear you. I mean, I I think that's that that's the huge advantage of of starting to create this segment here, so that listeners can start to understand more about how converters work. And I think we're going to spin off, and we'll probably do a whole podcast on just converters. I think the basics for me are: if you have a stock turbo, you should be running stock stall. Am I crazy? Yeah. Well, you you should be running stock stall, but you could get into a lower stall. Um, but you know, like I, I, I say lower stall, I associate them with the nomenclatures of my company. Um, but it, it really just, just the stock converter doesn't mean it's the most efficient converter. You know, it means that it was just, it was created for that application. Sure. Um, does that mean that it's the best for towing? You know, does that mean, I, w- I would say that that means that it's the best overall, you know, around for every little application that the truck could be getting thrown at. But as far as like uh, response, responsiveness, and things like that, um, you could go to a, a just a slighter, you know, lower stall and have a lot more fun with the truck. But then again, when we start to modify the truck, 
that you know that that converter could become you know null and void depending on whatever the situation is and what modifications get get put on it that that's great information thank you for touching on that and you know thoroughly explaining that but let's talk about the fun part of our segment you hear this call i'm sure at least a, call, a few times a month i want to hit a thousand horsepower <clears throat> what what does it take to hit a thousand horsepower in that transmission case what are we doing to our transmission to be able to lay the foundation down for the rest of our build well you know that's a really good question um first and foremost you know the, the the what you need to have is an open mind, and you need to understand that at a thousand horsepower, or you know, really any at additional horsepower, um, what we're doing is you know the best possible scenario. When we get into a thousand you know plus horsepower, things don't last forever. You know, maintenance becomes key. How you treat your vehicle becomes very very important, and. Um, you know, I, I run into this situation a lot where people think that built means built forever. <laughs> yeah, I and, built uh, it. What's the problem? Unlimited it, abuse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it, that's not the case. You know, it, it, you still it's still very important that you know what's going on. It's still very important that you pay attention because, um, you know, heat and all this kind of stuff promotes premature wear of parts, and we need to be vigilant. Um, to anything that can go on as far as like you know hung shifts or flares or something that's not releasing properly but a thousand horsepower um, you know the thousand horsepower build starts at the very beginning and uh, you know that starts with a flex blade you know yeah. obviously we need something strong that's going to bolt to the crank and allow that torque and hold that torque converter weight and take that power um, Flex plate is very important. That's the that's the link. That's the fusible link to everything, as well as the torque converter. So, um, I said that before, you know, and they it adds to the safety of the vehicle. You know, the last thing you want is to see somebody get hurt doing something that they love to do for something you know as small as you know a upgrading plate. a flex plate. And I've seen them crack. Um, you know, stock ones, 500, 600 horrors. No, you know, they can crack and break. Why waste? Why, like you said in the beginning at the first episode, why would you want to get back into something that costs so much to take apart? Yeah. Yeah, you know, and that's the thing. You have to pull the transmission regardless. Any type of issue that you have, regard, uh, is, with the exception of, you know, a solenoid or a valve body issue, we're pulling it. Mm-hmm. You know, if we got to restall it, we're, we're pulling it. You know, if we if we have a flex plate issue, we're pulling it. And you know, it it goes beyond the transmission. It, and you guys know that. I mean, it goes to you know wear worn out U joints <clears throat> um, and things like that that can send that vibration through that you know through the whole drivetrain and into the transmission and you know all, all the way forward. And the people that have dealt with it the hard way are sitting there right now listening, shaking their heads, saying them sons of bitches are right. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and, and the thing is, is we've been there. You know, uh, we obviously we test uh, an astronomical amount of vehicles and transmission parts and stuff, and we overlook things a lot, too. I mean, we were testing 68s for a while. And, you know, every, every 68 that we build gets thrown in a truck. We were just throwing them in and out of this truck as a cyclic, driving them, making sure that the shift strategies were, were good. And uh, we developed this lock-up valve body, and we just overlooked, you know, checking out the drive shaft and making sure the U-joints and everything were legitimate. And one of our employees took it out to test it out, and, you know, the thing spit the drive shaft out of the truck, and it, it damn near ripped the transmission right out of the truck. I mean, it was hanging on the ground. Yeah, the uh, knee bone's connected to the hip bone. <laughs> exactly, and, you know, that could be a very, very catastrophic incident. Somebody could get hurt, you know, other you know, other people could get hurt, you know, not let alone your bank account, you know, and that's not what we want Pride, bank account, feelings. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, especially when you're, uh, you know, when you're looking over next to somebody next to you and you got that adrenaline pumping and, you know, this losing is not an option. Wow, Paul, what did you think of that episode? You know, it was, I, I remember recording it just a little bit before we're, we're doing this intro and outro and uh, it really was a lot of fun. I mean, he does have just such good information for people out there. I can attest to Suncoast and everything that they stand for. So, uh, you know, I appreciated talking with them and having such a guest on our show. 
Absolutely. This has been Paul Wilson. I'm Danny Voss. Thanks for listening. The Diesel Performance Podcast is brought to you by Calibrated Power Solutions, home of DuramaxTuner.com, developer of performance engine and transmission calibrations for a wide variety of late model diesel powertrains, including the Duramax, Cummins, John Deere, Jeep, and many more. For more information and the best customer service in the industry, check out CalibratedPower.com or call 815-568-7920.